Hey guys, um, I've been wanting to do this one for a long time and it was finding the right bike that was the sort of killer. I wanted to find the bike with the right symptoms before I did this video. Um, I think you might like this one. This is a question I get asked all the time. Um, riding along, these are the symptoms. Obviously the title of the video is giving away what the video is about, but the symptoms are, and I get this phone call a lot. Riding along, bike cut out went to restart it, dashboard's doing weird things and I get a funny clicking noise from underneath my seat. So those are the symptoms. Um, the symptom is a flat battery. Um, I'll explain in a minute, I'll do a little bit of theory for you what that clicking noise is. It's the starter solenoid engaging and disengaging really really fast which gives you that sort of buzzing noise. If it's a buzz then it's definitely flat battery. Sometimes you get one click and then the clocks go off. And that's normally, when I say clocks, I mean the dashboard just dies. Um, so you push the button, you get one click from under the seat and everything turns off. That's sometimes not a flat battery, that's sometimes a bad connection somewhere, either a loose battery terminal or a bad earth to, from the earth strap to the back of the engine from the battery. Um, but in this case, this is a a flat battery and we're going to explore in this video charging systems, how they work. Um, I'm going to do some sort of theory if you like. I've got a cool app that will do like live circuits um, and I found a screen recording app that I can use so I can share that with you so we can do a little bit of theory, show you some of, compo some of the components and hopefully fix this bike you're about to see in a minute which is a slightly tired but still all right, um, Yamaha R6. Cool, so first things first, I'll explain what the buzzing under the seat is when you push the, um, push the start button. Right, as cool as this funky app is, yeah, we're not gonna do that. Pen and paper, much easier. Right, so. Why is your bike making that weird buzzing noise when you push the start button? You kind of need to understand a little bit of electrical, basic electrical theory for this. I'm not going to go into that. There are a million YouTube videos out there. I considered doing a sort of getting into the weeds with the whole electrical theory thing, but I haven't got the willpower to do it at the moment, to be honest. So let's just do the kind of un let you understand why your bike's making that funny noise. So um, I'm going to assume that you know a little bit um, if you don't I apologize go and do some homework so you've got a battery um, earth is the is the is the chassis so it's earth to the chassis and then you've got the positive lead now the starter motor let's call that the starter motor for your bike um, one side of that is earthed I'll say one side of it it's bolted to the engine so that's earth now what happens is when you Let's draw the little handlebar switch. Uh, again, I'm assuming you kind of can understand what I'm drawing, but that's the handlebar switch. Now, the amount of current needed to make this starter motor turn, that current couldn't pass through the switch on the handlebar where you push the button. It's only a little tiny switch, and there's, you know, upwards of sort of 70 amps going through to the starter motor. So, the way they work it is there's a thing called a um, a starter solenoid which is basically a great big relay and how that works um, let me think how, how to draw this so there's a big switch here okay um, and this switch is controlled by um, a winding so let's go to there and let's put that to live so what would happen is you push your uh, this is earth this side you push the button on your handlebar this is the starter solenoid and they almost always have uh, well they always have two big thick cables go into them the positive from the battery and the positive to the starter motor so the big the two big thick cables are both live going to your starter solenoid and then you often find that there's a 30 amp fuse when you pull a little cover off there's a 30 amp fuse in there that's the main fuse for the bike so what happens is this this big I'm going to try not to waffle this big thick cable from your battery is the main feed for the bike and for the starter motor 
and then there's some wires I don't want to draw the internal circuitry of it but there's some wires coming off um, through a 30 amp fuse uh, and that's the main feed for your bike and that's just connected to this positive wire with a with a with a fuse so you have you tend to have three or four little thin wires on a connection block and then two big fat wires and that's your start solenoid anyway to the point why is that why have you got that funny buzzing noise when you push the button on your handlebar because that's what tends to confuse people they think something weird is happening it's not it's just all that's happening is the battery voltage here um, in this battery is very low and when you switch this switch you energize this winding here um, so it's uh, it's normally ground side switch so you're switching it with an earth uh, this this coil of wire generates a magnetic field which pulls this switch shut um, and what happens then is when this switch is pulled shut there's a rush of current to the starter motor which drops the voltage in the battery which means this coil can not maintain its magnetic field so it opens the switch again so when the switch is opened um, the voltage goes back up in the battery um, the magnetic field increases closes the switch again rush of current to the starter motor voltage drops in the battery magnetic field weakens or collapses switch opens again and that cycle repeats so what you're hearing is you're hearing the the contacts that buzzing sound you're hearing the contacts inside the starter solenoid opening and closing you know at a real sort of high frequency well not high frequency but probably you know upwards of <coughs> 40 50 hertz probably um, so you're getting this little buzzing sound which is just this switch opening and closing really quickly as this goes through that cycle of starter pulling current field collapsing voltage rising slightly in the battery then once the current stops flowing anyway you get the idea you know you know what I'm trying to say so that's what that buzzing sound is and then what can sometimes happen is you can push the button on the starter motor you energize this solenoid and you get just one click I think I just mentioned that previously um, normally that's indicative of a either a bad earth to the starter motor or um, a bad connection maybe on the battery terminal or something like that because what happens is you energize you get that click is the relay clicking shut um, it draws a load of current and when it pulls current if there's big resistance somewhere the connection is then broken completely so you get one click and then everything goes off that's that's a separate thing to a flat battery so don't I'm not explaining this that well we don't get confused with that so anyway we're going to go to the to the bike now and, and do the actual repairing um, I'll try I'm not like a YouTube wizard so I'll try and put some time stamps in the description so we can you wanna when people watch these videos of mine I'm sure I drive people insane sometimes with my waffling um, and they want me to get to the point so I'll put some timestamps in where I think there's relevant relevant bits of information and then you can dive straight to where you need to get to anyway back to the bike oh boy I didn't want to do this I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of theory um, otherwise for some of you this video isn't gonna make sense can you I don't know whether my mic's picking it up. Can you hear that noise? My dog is lying next to me snoring. Um, anyway, so the first thing, um, <clears throat> so I don't really want to get into too much into detail with the theory, but I feel like I've got to do a bit of this just to help people that don't have a basic understanding make more sense of this video. Um, so how's, how's electricity generated? That's the first thing. If you remember from school, you've got a length of wire okay and then you get a excuse the poor drawing if you get a magnet with a magnetic flux and you move the magnet over the wire you induce current to flow in the wire so if magnetic flux passes over a wire current will flow now the same is true if you what am I trying to say sorry big long pause there if you've got a piece of wire and you pass electrical current down through the wire 
you will create a magnetic field. That's just physics. You probably remember that from school. Sorry, that's probably teaching you to suck eggs, but I just feel like I need to um, mention that to follow on to this next bit. So, if I draw a graph, okay, um, this is volts, zero volts, ten volts, five volts, whatever, okay, and then this is time on this side, one second, two second, three second, four second. This will make sense in a minute. You're wondering what the hell I'm doing. So, if you had a voltage flowing, say you had five volts flowing um, constantly, it, you would you would plot it. This will make sense when you watch my video when I'm using my oscilloscope, oscilloscope and stuff. So skip over this bit if you think it's not relevant. I've put some time stamps hopefully in the in the um, doobly doo down below. Um, so five volts on a on a on a plotted like that over time if you had a constant 5 volts it would look like that if you if the voltage r took a second to rise up to say 10 volts and then another second to go back down to zero it would look sort of something like that if you plotted it get what I'm getting at cool okay so look at that right so let's draw another graph so we got uh, 5 10 uh, zero and then we go the other way and we go five and ten this way okay am I making sense so this is we go back to this one current is flowing if you had a piece of wire current is flowing in the same direction all the time the polarity is the same so it's flowing from let's say hypothetically from positive to negative that's DC direct current now the reason I'm doing this is a generator, which is what we're going to be talking about on this motorbike, creates AC. So if we go back to our analogy with a wire, if you've got a piece of wire, let's just say that's the magnet with a magnetic flux. As the magnet as the magnet approaches the wire, current will flow in this direction, and then as the magnet moves away from the wire as it goes past and carries on going past the wire the current will reverse and flow in a different direction so that would be represented like this so you'd have um, as the magnet its magnet started to approach the wire it would start to generate voltage and current flow and then it would get to a point where the, the magnet is stationary and then the magnet would start moving away and it would induce, actually this would be the stationary point as the mat magnet approached the wire it would go generate current flow in one direction and then as it moved away from the wire in the other direction it would um, create current flow in the opposite direction so 0 to 10 0 to 10 so you'd have a wire current flowing in this direction on this section and then once it gets to the zero point no no voltage no current flow and then as as it started flowing the other way it would go this way how am I making any sense at all I hope to God I am. So that's that's um that's the basics of AC and DC. So this is AC and the other one with it flowing in one constant direction. This one, that's DC. Wow, I think I'm making a hash of this. Right, okay. The reason I'm doing that is with a motorbike, or with most modern large-ish capacity, so anything sort of one two five cc and over probably you have, well not probably, anything one two, anything bigger than 125cc you're going to have what's called a three phase generator so basically what you've got is you've got three um, copper windings um, behind the flywheel, they actually don't look like that I'll, I'll, show, I'll flash up a picture now of what an actual generator looks like so there you go, that's what a generator looks like um, when we're wired up that's what they call a star configuration this will make sense in a minute and then this is delta so you've got three coils this is one coil this is another coil this is another coil one coil another coil another coil and then they've all got an output okay depending on how they're wired uh, whatever so ignore that one because most stuff is wired up as a star configuration let's draw a better picture so center and then these are these are representing coils of copper wire, um, and then 
with most bikes you have coming out of the generator you have three wires well with all with this type of generator you have three wires they're almost always yellow but sometimes they're white they're white on this um r6 that we're working on at the moment and then you've got some magnets in the flywheel this is the flywheel you've got magnets and they rotate and as those magnets rotate they pass each of these copper wires in turn these copper windings in turn there's a bit more to the physics of this because you're actually using two of the at any one time that the, the current is let's say at this moment in time current would be flowing this way through this wire through this coil and out of this one this way so you'd have AC if you put a, a meter on a um, measuring AC to this terminal and this terminal or these two co two of the three either yellow or white wires you would get AC volts coming out of there do you see what I mean as this rotates and then it would switch over it would then be these two and then these two and so on and so forth and then that that represented on on the little I think my pen's running out on the little graph that I drew um, it would be represented you'd have one of the phases like this and then you'd have another of the phases like this and then you'd have oh god I'm gonna draw it badly and then another one sort of like this so those would be your three phases um, I think that might have flashed up briefly on that previous little bit um, and then this is so you've got three phase AC you've got three three lots of copper windings each producing their own AC um, voltage uh, obviously it's not 10 it's higher than that but that's just to give you an eye on this is time again one two three four seconds or milliseconds whatever you want it to be but it's time along the bottom voltage this way so you've got three separate phases each producing an AC signal now then what a motorbike needs to do is it's got those three yellow or or white wires coming from the generator it needs to do something with that AC voltage because motorbikes have batteries uh, and they're DC they're not AC current if you connect something between the two posts of a battery conventional um, theory current flow current flows from positive to negative um, so we need to convert that AC voltage into DC so God, I am waffling, aren't I? So you need, you've got these AC signals, you need to, what they call, rectify it. So you need to change it from an AC. So you need to eliminate this section of it, so it's just DC. So what a rectifier basically does is, it removes the current flow that's going in one direction and it uses diodes a uh, symbol for a diode is uh, is that so if that's a diode current will flow in that direction but it won't flow in that direction so on each of these wires where it goes into the regulator rectifier inside the regulator rectifier there's a bank of um, depending on the on the on the design but there's there's six diodes and the three phases come in um, and the AC signal is rectified and it's outputted as a DC voltage and then it goes into another part of the regulator rectifier which is the voltage regulator part and that voltage regulator part is connected to the battery um, so if that's positive that's negative it's connected to the battery and it monitors battery voltage and keeps the battery voltage at about 13 and a half volts theoretically um, so the regulator rectifier is responsible for turning the AC that your bike generator makes into DC um, and then regulating the voltage regulating the voltage so those are the, the the sort of main components of your charging system you've got the generator assembly which is an AC three phase generator because it's got three lots of windings and then that feeds into the regulator rectifier that turns the AC into DC and it also regulates the battery voltage or regulates its voltage the output voltage 
Wow. Um, if you sat through all that, well done. Right, now let's actually get to the bike and this might make a little bit more sense then once you see what's going on with the bike. Certainly these waveforms when you see them on the oscilloscope might make a little bit more sense. Awesome. Right, bike. Okay guys, it's time for the um, pokey pokey mm -hmm. bit now. Um, the actual testing of the bike. Sorry about all that heavy duty theory but you can't really fix these things unless you've got a bit of an idea of what's actually going on. So there's a couple of connection blocks under here we, we need to get at to do our testing. Um, I've got an external fuel supply hooked up to the bike so the bike will run without the tank on. That makes life easier. Um, I've had the battery on charge for probably only an hour and the, the voltage is actually still quite low but it's come up quite quickly. I think the battery is going to be okay and it cranks the engine alright. But see 11.45. Um, which is obviously still flat, but there's enough in it just to start it, and I've I've left it low like that intentionally because it sort of exacerbates. I've already done. I confess, I've already done a little bit poking around with my meter be, before I'm filming this, so I actually know what's wrong with it already. Um, but having that battery voltage low, it sort of exacerbates the problem, if you like. Um, so the first thing you would do um, is run the engine and check the battery voltage and see. Um, whatever your resting battery voltage is with the ignition on, let's say it's 12.2, say, with the, with the ignition on, ready to start, you'd see that voltage rise when you um, when you start the engine. Initially, as you crank the engine, if you've got your voltmeter connected, initially as you crank the engine, the... Um, whoa, got no connection there. What's going on? Hello? There we go. So... Initially, you would um, see the voltage dip slightly. Assuming everything was working correctly, you'd see the voltage dip slightly. And then once the engine was running, you'd see the battery voltage rise. And a bike like this, most modern Jap bikes and European bikes, modern stuff, at tick over, you'd probably see 12.8, 12.9 volts at the battery. And then once you get the RPM up over sort of three, 4,000 RPM, you'd see anywhere between 13 and a half and 14 and a half volts, depending on how flat the battery was. Um, but certainly over 13 with a couple of thousand RPM on the engine. Um, you can look up the spec in your workshop manual for the maximum voltage, because there's some circuitry we discussed in our little theory there, which is the, um, what's it called? the it's called a regulator rectifier, as we discussed. Um, the rectifier bit of it, I, bit of it, I explained. So it's turning AC into DC, and the regulator bit of it is the bit that's controlling the output voltage to the battery. So that normally is maximum 14 and a half volts. If you see more than that, check the spec in a workshop manual, because you might find that that part of the regulator rectifier is faulty and it's actually overcharging the battery. That's something you sometimes see. Um, you normally manifest itself in a, in a battery getting a little bit swollen and a little bit misshaped because it's um, it's basically been boiled. Um, okay so we've got good voltage there so we now need to start the engine with everything connected up and, uh, and see if that voltage changes. Right okay so contact Saw that voltage dip initially when I pushed the start button, and now there's a little bit of an increase, but we got nowhere near the 13 and a half to 14 volts that we want. Now that problem is classical generator failure. What tends to happen, and this <laughs> this isn't always the case, but from my experience, which is 20 plus years of fixing these things, 95% of the time when it's not charging at all, so you don't see any change at all from that battery voltage, that resting voltage, it's normally the regulator rectifier that's failed. If you see a slight increase, 
on the voltage like that it's normally the generator and what normally happens is you know we've got those three phases either delta or star like I explained so it's a three phase generator normally what happens is one of those phases fails or technically two of those phases fail because as I explained in the video the AC part of it uses two of the two of the um, sets of windings at the same time if that makes sense I don't really explain that very well but you've got the three phases and there's three sine waves coming out but to get one of those sine waves you're relying on two other coils if you see what I mean um, they sort of swap around as I explained in my uh, in my video so that's classical generator failure um, so let me move the camera now to the generator connector and we can have a look at the sine wave coming out of the generator look at the amplitude of that and see what's actually happening with the generator right so on this particular bike I'll try not to get my hands in the shot there's this connector here which is they're normally yellow wires to be honest but in this case they're white there's three of them there that's the connection block that goes down to the generator and then here we've got the regulator rectifier which has got another plug on it which has got if I can get it out of course it's got I'm not sure whether you can see that but that's got five wires although I know there's six holes but if you look on the back side there's one missing there so we've got three whites there and a battery positive and an earth um, so that plugs into the regulator rectifier there and then this is the this one down here with the three yellow I keep saying yellow the three whites is directly connected to the generator now the way I normally skin these when I'm diagnosing a problem or testing a generator is I go straight to the regulator rectifier plug because that's the sort of that's where you need the AC to end up if I don't see the readings I want um, I then will go to this other plug because there's a very slight chance that there might be a continuity issue through the wiring loom here between these three whites and these three whites highly unlikely in 20 plus years I've sort of seen it once or twice um, there can sometimes be a a burnt connector in the back of these these there's a lot of current flow through these connection blocks and they can often um, you often see them they're a little bit discoloured and a little bit black um, so keep an eye out for that that's basically any heat like that in a circuit is resistance and it's just you get a slightly bad connection on these connectors it's normally where the generator plugs into the loom to be honest you get a slightly bad connector connection um, with a little bit of resistance obviously that generates heat and then that causes the connection to, to fail more which creates more resistance which, which creates more heat and you're sort of into a cycle of destruction so look for burnt and black connectors on these connection blocks um, so what we're going to do we're going to leave the generator plugged in and we're going to go straight to this connection block here and we're going to back probe these three whites for the generator and we're going to see what sort of AC signal we're getting out of them um, so remember meter set to AC not DC if you set it to DC you'll get wonky readings and you'll be going around in circles so right get the uh, bike running and we'll have a look at the AC signal coming out of there so we've got to remember we're on DC now uh, we got to go volts AC often or not often but sometimes with meters you've got to know your meter you're using sometimes you need to move um, a lead from one obviously you've got the earth going in sometimes AC is on a different plug you've got more than one hole to put your banana plugs in so pay attention to that as well you get a funny reading so let's go back to that connection block Okay, I'm not completely convinced that's in focus but we'll do our best so what we're going to be doing we're going to be testing um, with the meter we're going to put one in one like this you can see that and then we're going to go look at the AC signal on that one or the AC voltage to start with we're going to look at and then we're going to go to that one and look at the AC voltage then we're going to move our probe to this one and we're going to do AC voltage that way and AC voltage that way and then we're going to move along and then we're going to go AC voltage that way and AC voltage that way if that makes sense that just means you've you've actually made a couple of unnecessary connections there but 
that's a good logical way just move this one on along and check the other two and basically you should see the same voltage so what we're looking for in terms of a voltage out of these with the bike ticking over with a good generator you'll be seeing about 15 to 20 volts AC just with the bike idling when you rev the bike up to sort of over 3000 rpm you can expect to see upwards of 35 volts AC um, my voltmeter over ranges at 50 volts AC and if I rev a bike too hard when I'm testing these it you know it shows an error on the screen so you're getting you're getting 40 plus volts AC when you when you're revving the engine and you should see the same regardless of where you put your your probes and which way around you put them you'll see 40 volts 40 volts move that along doesn't matter which your polarity because it's AC 40 volts 40 volts 40 volts 40 volts so it's test them at tech over and then test them with the engine revving up so you'll be getting sorry if I'm repeating myself but you'll get 15 volts ticking over or there or thereabouts and uh, and obviously that higher 40 volts when it's revving up right I'll put you on the meter screen now and we'll run the bike and we'll see what we get right so bike ticking over this is the first one 13.3 I consider that okay move the probe to the next one so the next pair 12.6 little bit lower okay move the probe along go on and go back to the beginning again like I described 13.5 not bad 7.4 so, as I described, or as I said, when when the battery voltage was creeping slightly, we've got a duff phase in the in the generator. I'll just carry on with my test. So, lead along, and then do them again. Yeah, it's that one phase. That's all right. Okay, so we've got a duff phase from the. Uh, from the generator so I'll put the meter now to um, to scope mode and we'll have a look at the um, the actual waveform see what it looks like right so the first AC signal that we tested so what we want to do is we want to pay attention to the amplitude of the signal. So that's peak to peak. Okay, so if you look here, we've got 20, we've got zero in the middle and 20, 20. So this is a, well it's a, it's a hundred volt scale from one side to the other. So 50 volts this side and 50 volts this side. So that's our amplitude. We've got about 20 volts peak to peak on that one. Okay on this one, the next one about the same move me probe over 20 volts peak to peak on that one and then on this one you see how that signal's weaker and slightly misshaped as well so that one that's a good field that's a bad field so if I show you it with the engine revving slightly, if I've got enough hands. So you can see the frequency increase and you can see the amplitude increase as well on that good field. Now if we go to the bad field. So that's the duff one. Whoa get me meter in sorry guys one-handed is difficult you are kidding me right so this is the bad field you can see the frequency increase but we just haven't got the peak to peak voltage And then back to the good one again, just quickly. See, 
goes over the scale as I rev it and it increases sort of exponentially with the RPM whereas the bad phase the bad one kind of peters out anyway we've got a duff alternator so that's the test um, take the alternator off now and uh, have a look inside and see what's going on with it. Just as a side note, you might want to, um, if you're doing one of these yourself, you know I said you could also test at the point where the generator actually plugs into the loom because there might be a wiring loom fault. I know from experience looking at this waveform that it's not a wiring issue in there, it's a duff field in the, um, in the, in the, in the generator. Um, but just as a as a sort of side note also check the same feed on these three wires just to be doubly doubly sure I know in this case it isn't that but it's always a good idea to make sure the wiring is intact in the wiring loop now I know what you're all thinking you're thinking well how do you test a regulator rectifier there's a sixty four thousand dollar question now you can easily test the diode pack inside um, you know I explained there's the diodes inside that's rectifying the AC to DC my theory bit um, the way I, I tend to do it is the diodes are easy to test however the voltage regulation part of it which seems to be the bit that tends to fail um, really needs to be dynamically tested ie you want live AC voltage going in and then you want to put your meter in the back here on the post positive and negative and see what the regulator rectifier is doing with the voltage um, so really to get a conclusive 100% guaranteed yes or no is it duff isn't it duff um, answer for your regulator rectifier you need a working generator from my experience you can misdiagnose if you're not really really careful um, there's a hundred videos out there on YouTube of people telling you how to test your regulator rectifier but you'll notice none of them seem to mention the voltage regulation piece of it. They only ever only ever mention the um, the diode pack, which is the um, not the voltage regulator. They mention the diode pack, which is the um, the rectifying bit of the circuit. That's easy to test, but from my experience, 90% of the time the the other bit fails. The voltage regulation bit of them. So get your generator working, um, and then test your regulator rectifier. Uh, you'll find, generally speaking, that if the generator has failed, um, actually that's not that's not quite true, is it? So I'd say 20% of the time, when the generator's failed, the regulator rectifier has failed as well. And what happens is there's an internal short in the regulator rectifier, which shorts out these field um, I call them fields but they're you know the the, the three phases of the uh, of the generator they get shorted out um, because the regulator rectifier has failed and it kills the generator so be careful if you put a new generator on um, to make sure that the regulator rectifier is working properly you're all right to um, initially just quickly plug it in and test uh, to make sure it's all right um, Okay, I'm waffling a bit, aren't I? So what I'll do is we'll take this generator off. Um, we'll have a look. It's going to be all black and horrible and crusty. We've got a new generator on its way, which will be here imminently. Um, I've also got a new regulator rectifier if needs be. And we'll test and see what the battery charging is doing. And we'll test the, um, test the output from the regula regulator rectifier, which is effectively, you can test it at this plug here. But you can also, it's the same as putting your, your voltage probes on the battery to see whether it's clipping the, see if it's charging the battery and see if it's clipping it at the 14 and a half volts that it should be. Anyway, that's enough waffling, I think. Um, I'm going to get this generator off now and we'll see what's going on. Right, generator removal. Um, I've just pulled the wires down from under the tank here, disconnected it, pulled it down. Interestingly, if this bike could talk, I think it could tell a few stories. It's been down the road 
hard enough to wear a hole through this cover and somebody's welded it up. It's probably got nothing to do with the generator failing, but looks like it's had a bit of a hard life. Uh, right, two more bolts to get this off. And two. And then with these, um, just give them a off quite easy normally you need to hit them quite hard to break the gasket seal and also <coughs> it's not really a how-to but you might get oil because there's oil in here so you might get either a little bit or a lot of oil depending on the, on the design and also you've got to pull against the magnets in the flywheel to get them off uh, okay a little bit of oil Ooh, no gasket Somebody's been in here before. Well, we know that because they welded this cover up. Okay. I don't know whether you can see on camera, but burnt, crusty windings on this one. And on this one and this one. I'll get you a better shot of this now on the bench. Have a quick look at it. Also, when you're taking them apart, on a lot of jack bikes, the, there's a idler gear. Uh, this is quite a common design really, there's, there's the starter motor pops through the case here um, and the tapered roller clutch is on the back of the flywheel and there's an idler gear between the two, so pay attention to how that comes out. Sometimes there's little thrust washery things on either side of the gear, in this case there isn't. Um, anyway that's that, let's put this on the bench and have a better look at it. Just before we go to the bench and have a look at the generator, um, it's worth just quickly mentioning flywheels. Um, this is a permanent magnet type setup with this, this kind of generator. So the magnets, are, if you see how the, the screwdriver wants to pop along from one magnet to the next. So the magnets are inside this outer ring of the flywheel here. Um, remember earlier on when I was doing my theory thing, I was talking about magnetic flux passing over a copper wire generating current, well that's basically, you know, here's your winding of copper wire, these are your magnets, that, that obviously goes around, that's the crankshaft, so that's what's going on there. But let's put this on the bench and have a closer look. Right, oh, first things first, just uh, remove the coils from this cover, I've already had this in the vise and just loosen these off, they're not actually this loose, so we'll, we'll take this generator out of here. And then there's a little metal guide to stop the wires fouling on the flywheel. And off it comes. Put that in the parts washer. So we'll get a better look at this. Let's get it in shot. Hopefully we can focus so we can see. I don't know whether you can hear me because my mic is directional, I'm now behind it. Um, burnt coils here, burnt coils here, that one looks a bit black as well, that's black as well, it's not in good shape that at all. Now I, I neglected to mention a kind of an important, well not an important thing, but yeah an important thing, um, a test that you can do um, when it's on the bike, doesn't need to be on the bench like this. These three white wires, I know you refer to them as yellow all the time, I know, because usually they are. Um, the three coils, if you remember from our wiring diagram, they're, they're not connected to earth in any way. They're connected to, sort of through either star or delta configuration. They're connected to each other, um, so they should never touch earth. And what can happen is, as these, let's get this back in shot, as these coils overheat, they can burn off their insulation and they can end up shorting out to the actual carrier piece, the centre boss. There's this metal and this metal, that's all one piece and the coils are wrapped round on little insulators. And it can burn through the insulation and short to earth. So you can get a meter and you can test by putting one clamp to, so your earth clamp onto here, and then get your other clamp and individually go through these three wires and see if there's any leakage to earth. Um, I'll show you that now quickly on the meter. Right, so you need to set your meter to ohms. I'm not going to show you how to do that because every meter is different, but basically 
you're looking for um, a leakage to earth so put your negative probe on the center on the metal boss now that should basically leave that screen I genuinely don't know what the answer is going to be because I haven't done this yet um, that should stay exactly like that basically you know there's no continuity through air is there and you don't want any continuity um, from the wires to there so if anything happens when I put my probe in the back of here then we've got a problem oh look at that that's a dead short that's absolute toast so basically these windings have shorted to um, to ground now that would have been a good test when it was on the bike to tell whether the generator was knackered obviously that would have been a good test we could have done that on the bike however here's the thing right when you're diagnosing these problems often these coils can fail um, and not short to ground at all um, so it's not a definitive test as to whether or not the um, the windings are buggered so what I like to do as, as I think I've already explained is a dynamic test i.e. with the engine running looking at the AC signal and the AC voltage is far more realistic because what can sometimes happen with these as well is they can be fine when the engine's cold and it's not until they get a little bit of heat in them that they start to everything expands ever so slightly and they start shorting out so you can you can test a generator when the you know you start the bike up the bike's cold start it up and go oh well that's all, all seems fine and it only stops charging when it's been running for 10 minutes so just bear that in mind if you're trying to find a charging fault you want the engine at operating temperature um, and if you can you know test with the engine running in a in a real world scenario um, okay so we've got some new bits here I'll unwrap those and show you the new parts and uh, we can fit the new bits and do some more testing right so let's clear the decks a little bit make a bit of room move this out of the way that needs to go in the scrap bin okay let's do a bit of uh, unboxing Everybody likes a nice... No, I'm not going to say it out loud. Right, uh, where's my knife gone? Don't need a knife. So in here, we should have a new generator. Obviously, you've already seen. Got a new gasket here. Um, so a new Jenny. Now, this has come from, and this is not an advert for them, but they are pretty good, so we'll give them a mention. A company called Electrics World. They're, um, they're a UK company. Um, these guys here. Oh, that's a bit overexposed. Electrics World Limited. It used to be, back in the day, it always used to send your generators off to be rewound. I think it used to be a company called West Country Windings I used to use. And they were great, but you'd have to have the bike in the shop, you'd have to take the generator off, you'd have to send the generator away and wait a week for it to come back and blah blah blah. It was all a big pain in the arse. So, Having these ready done is um, saves a lot of arsing around. And to be honest, they're, they're cheap as beans. Oh, it doesn't come with the bloody connectors on it. Right, so anyway, there's the new... The reason it hasn't come ready assembled, it's got the connection blocks and stuff and the, and the shielding for the wire. Um, some of these are generic. They fit more than one bike. This is probably the same as an R1. And the connection block for the R1 is up underneath the seat, so they give you, you know, obviously loads of wire, and you cut to length and match it to the to the original one. Um, anyway, there that is. Got a new gasket, so I have to put this together now, and uh, I'll put this together, make it all the right size, and then we'll do that test with a meter to ground, just to show you that. I don't know, just to show you that uh, what a good one looks like, and then we'll fit it to the bike, and we'll get it running, and we'll do a few more tests. Happy days. Here's a thing, they give you the wiring loom side as well as the generator side. Remember I was saying that sometimes that plug is black and horrible and burnt out? That's why they know that potentially the wiring loom side is going to be damaged so they give you the other side. Very nice of them, fair dues.
Okay, not exactly a top tip, but when I do these connectors, um, given the amount of current that flows, I like to. Um, well, I need to get some more solder. I've nearly run out. I need. To, I like to uh, just uh, put a little tiny weeny bit of solder on them. Just to make sure there's no resistance in the mechanical connection where it's crimped together. Not really necessary, but it's attention to detail like this that can make the difference between it failing and not failing next time. And it literally takes 30 seconds to do. And then these, in terms of where they go, doesn't matter. They all, they can go in any which way. Uh, so, one, and two, and three. There we go, job done. Put it on the bike now, find out if it works. Right, okay guys, a bit of testage now. Um, first thing I'm going to test is, because I didn't do it when it was on the bench, I'm going to test the generator to... Uh, 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 and get the plug out the regulator rectifier. So the generator is all on, it's all plugged in, it's whatever. I've just unplugged the regulator rectifier, I don't think you can, maybe you can see from there. I'm just going to do the test that we did on the bench, which is the resistance to ground test, calibrate the meter. So that's our ohms. I'm going to connect the negative to the negative post on the battery. And then one at a time, I'm going to put them in the white wires of the Jenny. And if you can see, it doesn't go to ground at all. Nothing happens. Okay, so that's that test. So I'll plug the regular rectifier in. Right, so first things first, uh, let's do voltage test from the generator. So the generator isn't plugged into the reg rec anymore. I haven't got the headlights on, it will flatten the battery because we're just running off battery now, obviously it's not charging. Um, we want to go find the a smell of scope. Uh, ah, that one. It's hard to do it upside down. Right. We need a pokey pokey. So this is the AC voltage with it idling on the white wires, so that's the first pair, so hang on, we want to go, actually let's look at the waveform first, so that's one phase, that's the other phase, that's the other phase, right, that's the other phase, now move it along, careful not to short it out, other phase. So that's all good. If you remember the with the other one there was a phase that was less than the other, less had less amplitude. Okay, so let's measure the actual voltage. So if you go to volts well, AC remember not DC. Um, so at idle 17, next one, 17, again, move the pole, move the meter, and get it in, 17 again, 16, 17, there's no point in carrying on, you get the idea, um, and then, 
let me do a to show you what you get when you rev it up. I won't do all the all the fields, there's no point. So as you rev so 45 volts. Remember what I said before about my meter overranging. There's no point in doing the other fields, we know that that's good. Now I'll show you something interesting. Plug it back into its charging. You can hear the RPM of the engine drop when I plug the regulator rectifier back in because of the load from the generator. Now then, if I look at, if I go back to the oscilloscope, Now this is interesting, so this is measuring the, the alternating field, the AC field, but with the regulator rectifier plugged in, now I'm not going to blind you with science, but basically what you can see there is that's the voltage um, regulation part of the regulator rectifier working. So rather than having that sine wave, you can see the voltage, the top of the sine wave being clipped off, I changed fields. So that's actually a really good way of checking to see whether the voltage regulation bit of the regulator rectifier is working properly. Um, it's a good dynamic test that. Let me try the next field. Anyway, you get the idea, that's a bit of an extra. That's why an oscilloscope is such a powerful tool, because you can really see what's happening in real time. Right, now for some voltage testing. So, let's hook up the voltmeter to this battery. Uh, so, volts DC, we've got in the battery, we've got 11.69. We're pretty much where we were before. Um, so we're going to start the bike, Regrex plug back in, and we'll see um, what we get. Uh, I heard, I remember saying that with the engine running, you'd get um, in the region of, with the engine ticking over, you'd get in the region of sort of 12, 8, 12, 9, 13 volts. And what I wanted to explain was, I could sort of, as I was saying it, I could hear a lot of you screaming at me, saying, no, you'll get 13 and a half, 14 volts to tick over. With this design of generator with a with a fixed permanent magnets, um, they're pretty inefficient at slow speed. They're not like a car alternator. A car alternator has a field winding, which um, is a much stronger magnetic field. So when these are ticking over, they're they're barely charging, really, to be honest. And you need some RPM for them to be efficient. You'll probably um, you've probably all seen bike headlights. When the bike's ticking over, the headlight's quite low, and as soon as you blip the throttle, the headlight goes bright. Well, that's the design of the um, of the generator. Anyway, so I waffle as usual. So eleven six nine. Let's start it up. exactly how you'd expect. As soon as you give it RPM, the voltage shoots up. Um, I'd like to see it a little bit higher than that. I'd like to see it over 14. I suspect now, actually, after seeing that, that the internal resistance in the battery is maybe a little bit high. Um, so I think after seeing that, I'm actually going to put a new battery on this. Um, if you've got a battery that's in good condition, but that's just flat, um, you'll see you'll see a you know you'll see a higher voltage than that. Anyway, that's a fix, I think, guys. 
Um, I guess that concludes today's lesson. Um, I also want to say at this point, really, um, thank you for all the awesome comments I get for YouTube. It's pretty amazing. I'd say probably 99% of them are um, are all positive, which is quite bizarre. Um, I know I don't answer your questions. Um, a lot of people ask questions and stuff, uh, and I just don't get chance or time to to respond. But I really appreciate you. You know, you taking the time to leave a comment. It's time out of your life and I, I really appreciate it it inspires me to make more videos so I think we consider that fixed uh, thanks for watching guys and I will see you on the other side